Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast this week in America. Thank you for spending some time with us on the program today. Our guest on today's This Week in America is back with us, George Megan, an adventurer, lecturer, world travel. He holds the most official world records, eight of any European, and this includes the longest unbroken march of all time. When George was 24 years old, an elementary school dropout, British seaman, he decided to take the longest walk in human history. He did it without any special equipment, no foundation background, no financial backing of any kind. From the southern tip of South America to the northernmost part of Alaska at Prudhoe Bay, the epic journey, 19,019 miles, 2,425 days, all on foot, an estimated 41 million steps, and 12 and a half pairs of hiking boots. And it's all chronicled in his international bestseller, The Longest Walk, the record of our world's first crossing in the entire Americas, by our guest on the program. Welcome back once again, George Megan, coming to us via, uh, well, actually over the phone on this particular program from the United Kingdom. George, welcome back to the program. Well, it's, 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 a, it's a pleasure to be back with you, Rick, after our somewhat hiatus and despite technical issues, but here we are again, Rick. <laughs> yes, a little background here. I, we were trying to do this on Skype so we could actually see George, and we weren't able to do it successfully. I am calling him on his phone via Skype, but uh, we'll keep doing this until we get George's picture on the program as well. The first program we did a few months ago, you'll find if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, in the archives, you can listen to it on iTunes and Google Play. You can go to YouTube and see the video version. I don't want to go back through all of what we talked about, but that really laid the foundation for what George did. Let me just do one foundation question to get started. Some people first listening would go 24 years old. Why would you take off on this, especially with not a whole lot of planning and, and no amount of money? Why at that age did you decide this is something I really want to do? This is something in my DNA. I need to do this. Why? I, I met an English explorer and he said that the Americas had never been crossed successfully yet. Uh, and, and so I put myself in the position of going to the very southern tip of South America, just above Cape Horn on Tierra del Fuego, turning north and beginning what will become the longest journey of its kind uh, and, and the last of the great terrestrial crossings finally but uh, in those very 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 early days uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you 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 blanch at the very thought of moving a few hundred yards uh, but uh, you, you 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 need a good immune system and and you need a guardian angel and I certainly had a guardian angel in in those early, uh, those days on the road which I was privileged enough to make. Well, it, what's interesting and you just said something that, that's fascinating: a, a good immune system. Talk about that because to be a, and that may not even be something you thought about in the beginning. You've got uh, a whole number of, of different conditions you have to deal with different foods probably prepared or not prepared differently than you've ever had before. How difficult was this physically on you? Talking about from a health standpoint, because there were times when you were very sick. Oh, I, I got very sick. And by, by, the, by the middle Central America, I, I developed scurvy. What The only person you've ever spoken to, Rick, who, who's ever uh, dealt with scurvy, yes. which... Uh, to give you an example, if you cut yourself as a child, many, many, 20, 30 years later, that cut will open up and bleed. That, that's the, the, the shockingness of, of, of scurvy. One will ingest every kind of foul food and filthy water, and you have to have fundamentally a good immune system. And I believe I had the best immune system in the world at one point. Uh, to, 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 to keep me up. Um, yes, everything is, everything is very different, but the power of youth, and I was 24, then I'm 60, coming up to 69 now, uh, the power of youth is, is a model to its own self, to its own glory. 
Well, yeah, and what's interesting is he would try something at age 24 that you wouldn't maybe at 34 or 44 or, or 54. Did you have any idea what you were about to get into? I mean, you did, I said you didn't do a lot of preparation. I, I'm talking about in terms of, of finances. But did you have any idea what you were about to get into and how long it was going to take you to achieve this? I, 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 had, no, I had no idea. I didn't realize it would take me uh, nearly seven years to yes. get across the, the continent. And I did take an extra route. I, I reached... I reached Texas and then went over to Washington, D.C., the capital of your famous country, and then cut, a, cut across to, to Alaska. That would give me the longest unbroken march of all time, and I had one chance to go for broke, and I went for broke. But the risk is falling between two stalls, uh, but, uh, which I didn't, so I, I could keep going. Uh, I, I've been. Uh, I'm, uh, you, you need. You need a, a strong measure of, of luck, and we create our own luck. They say, but uh, but we do need that. Well, yeah. It, this is all. It's a fascinating book, an international bestseller, the longest walk, the record of our world's first crossing of the entire Americas. George Megan is the author, the gentleman to accomplish this. Our guest once again on the program. You'll find the book, of course, at Amazon Author Reputation Press. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you will uh, be able to link up and get information on the book and relive these moments. And with George's writing style, uh, you really feel like you're along with him on this walk and all the different experiences, the highs and the lows, meeting different people in different uh, circumstances. What an amazing trip. We can't do it, but we can do it uh, with George through the book, The Longest Walk. I want to talk about some of the, the, the topics that you mentioned and, and deal with, not only in the book, but, but afterwards as you were talking to people about your trip. And I know you've got a lot of thoughts on the U.S. Geographical Society of a History. Uh, talk about that, the role that played in the accomplishment of, of yeah. your walk. Uh, I was inspired by the reading of books, which includes Rear Admiral Perry and the fact that he had his femur, his strong leg bone, smashed and fixed up by uh, Dr. Cook, who was his doctor at that time, and they, they became bitter enemies, uh, as people do. In, Sometimes, in, yes. In the, yes. This, uh, uh, and that muddied the waters of his own achievement on... Uh, on, on the North Pole, which, according to Sir Wally Herbert, he did, in fact, make it, but he believed he hadn't. Uh, uh, the bizarreness of, of these things, but the, the very great uh, uh, Admiral Peary, and, and I had great privilege to know the last of the Antarctic uh, team of, of Admiral... Um, uh, oh, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm losing a bit there. Well, and that's yeah, that's in the book, the longest walk, and the people that you you've known, and these were people you looked up to in many cases, weren't they? These were legends uh, uh, in your mind in, in what you do, and you've had the opportunity to meet so many of these people. Yeah, I, I got to meet Colonel Lieutenant Colonel Norman Vaughan, who has a mountain in Antarctica, named for him by his. The leader, and he climbed it. Can you imagine this at the age of 89? Wow. Uh, when most of us are dead, he, he, <laughs> he's climbing he's mountains. Going, he went down to the Antarctic and he had a book called Height of Courage. And, and I says, oh, I'll have to write a book, The, the Depth of Despair. <laughs> and he thought that was funny <laughs> <laughs> well you've got a, a new goal now at age 89 is that something you're contemplating to get back in the uh, the history books here uh, well he, he he was the most remarkable american that i that i that i ever became friends with uh, and and uh, he got married for the fourth time in his 80s you know what a man, what a man is, is <laughs> yeah. Colonel Vaughan. Uh, uh, and we, we, be, we, we beloved this man and we miss him. And he, he died in uh, Alaska uh, uh, where he finally turned up. Uh, uh, and we tried to get him on the stamp of the United States, but uh, d didn't quite manage it. But, uh, but uh, anyway, he belonged there. Uh, 
and we became friends because uh, I made the last the last continental crossing and Norman made one of the earlier crossings near crossings of, of Antarctica uh, uh, incredible uh, uh, and somebody was very got very jealous jealous of him because he took his position and tried to kill him but he but he never mentioned it to the admiral in charge and, and <laughs> yes. he slept out in the snow well, you know, that's interesting. What you go through to do this, this was not a straight trek. I mean, these were perilous times for you. Were there times when you really feared for your safety, when you thought maybe this is going to be the end of this? Yeah, um, m many times. But uh, it, it, with the smell of the Panama Canal in, in my nostrils, uh, I was attacked by a street gang in the Marignon region, uh, uh, Panama, Panama City, and I was with a Choco guide, and he was smashed, fortunately, away. Uh, uh, and a Mike Tyson type figured person came out with a knife and l lunged at me, and I moved, and I thought, "Oh, good move, George!" And and, and it went into a rucksack that I I, I was wearing at, at the time, and then he. Swung. I, I mean, I, and I've experienced a miracle, Rick, uh, a, a real miracle. And he swung his knife because he couldn't risk missing again. He swung his life in, into my side, and I thought my entrails are going to be out in the dusty road in in a moment. And his hand with the knife was stuck. He couldn't go in, and it couldn't. He couldn't pull it out. It was as if it was held, which I suspect it was held. And then the Guardia Nacional of Panama came down in an armored armored truck uh, uh, and, and saved uh, the Choco guide and I from further damage. And there were there were people found found in the two, the, the communities on the Panama Canal. In both communities, were both found dead at the, uh, at the same time. So, so uh, we were very lucky. And I, I, I mentioned the envelope of security or guardian angel. This is the same thing that, that, that applied. So I'm, I'm, um, I, I'm immensely blessed, blessed to be able to chit chat with you, with you, Rick, uh, uh, on the radio. George Megan, our guest on the program, author of the book, The Longest Walk, the record of our world's first crossing in the entire Americas, uh, is a record, the longest unbroken march of all time, which we're talking about. A second time we've had George back on the program, and we will do this again because there are so many interesting facets to talk about, and uh, the time always goes by way too quickly. When you look back at some of the explorers of, uh, of all time, some of those that uh, are, are mentioned as legends, Take the Polo family, for example. Talk about them and, and your thoughts on them. And you have to have a whole different appreciation than most of us do because you have an understanding of what they went through to achieve what they did. They, they did. I'm thinking of France, Francisco de Oriana, the conquistador who crossed from the Pacific to the Atlantic along the river he named, which is the Amazon. And for, for his pains... His body was thrown into the Amazon. They were so sick of it. <laughs> and Muniz de Balboa arrived for the expedition across Central America. He arrived in a barrel and he successfully reached a peak on Darien and gazed to the Pacific Ocean. And when he got back, a lawyer... You're not a lawyer, are you, Rick? No, no, no. No, no. Well, well, a lawyer, he got up the nose of some lawyer who had him executed and his body was thrown to the dogs. Mm. But today in, pa in Panama, he, he, the, the highest award is the Order of the Balboa, which is named after him. So uh, life has its ups and downs, do, do they not? <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, it, unfortunately, he had to be dead to get that, that recognition, but I guess better uh, uh, better late than, than never. George Megan, our guest on the program. The book is a fascinating read, The Longest Walk, the record of uh, 
a world's first crossing of the entire Americas. I don't know quite where the time is going, but I something that, that's interesting, and, and you, you talk about this frequently, and that's the cost of dreams. Talk about that because you had a dream, you fulfilled that dream, and I'm sure there are costs that come with that. Well, it's an interest. The, the cost of dreams, well, in, in my particular case, the, the dream didn't lead to any any i live on social security here in england and i'm very grateful for for that so the cost of dreams was literally everything of a regular life yes but uh but one is so thankful to be alive uh, uh, that counts be before everything because it gives you opportunity to do other adventures and uh, and uh, etc yes well, what do you do to top that after you completed this? And and George came back to, to New York City. He was greeted there, was on all of the network news programs, the morning shows, the evening news programs, featured in, in People magazine, a celebrity when this finally culminated with the uh, with the visit to New York City. What do you do after that? I mean, what you, you, you talk about setting goals and doing things. What do you do after that to satisfy well, this desire you have? The, 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 the greatness of America is its recognition of people. In England, they don't recognize you. Or, although a local pub here in my community of Raynham has a, has a piece on, on this on the wall, which is, is, is very gratifying. But what one does, one tries to return to the world, which has given one so very much, try to return something back. And I work every day, for the uh, for the for the children who are non-academic, because they have just the same capacity and genius of mankind uh, as the academic kids. So in some cases, more, uh, but they're, they're they're cast into the second class of society, yes. uh, and that's not fair, in my view. Uh, and a great American word is fairness, uh, and that's not fair. And so I, I fight every day for those children, and I get adventures um, from that. I, I was recently in, in, in Iraq, uh, invited to talk at a university there, and, and, and they wouldn't let me visit the um, holy shrines because of safety reasons, so I formed a politician from Kabbalah, and he took me on a 2,000-mile swing through the deserts of, 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 of Iraq, and he was very much in favor of the invasion, uh, w the costly invasion uh, of, of Iraq. Uh, uh, yes. So Dr. Yusuf and I are still dear, dear friends. You know, something that, that jumps out in the work that you, you've done is pointing out the vagaries of, of social justice. You met a lot of people at various uh, cultural levels. Talk about that, because bottom line, we're all pretty much the same, aren't we? We're we're all exact exactly the same. We're we're we're, we're phys we're, uh, My sense is Rick that we're spiritual beings, temporarily in physical mode at the moment. Yes. Uh, uh, and uh, we're not to fear death and that because it's the inevitability of life itself. And without without uh, death, we cannot really have life. So so that that that's the way I see things we got about a minute or so left in the program and we'll have george back again because there's so many interesting facets of what he did and his life to talk about but i know you talking you mentioned it in, in talking in, in front of kids and inspiring and motivating these young people talk yeah, about yeah. that because you are the perfect example you mentioned before about about schools and kids dropping out as i mentioned an elementary school dropout who accomplished something nobody else has done Talk about facing kids and inspiring them to maybe the grades aren't what they think they're going to be, but don't fall into that, that uh, being categorized that, okay, you're a slow learner, you're not going to be able to do much with your life. Yeah, you yeah, the, the educational people categorize yes. these people in such a, a, ne a negative way, yet they have all the... That they have all the spirit and the, and the genius of any yes. human yes. being and have an unlimited potential. And I talk to the children about their unlimited potential and the, the wonderful uh, uh, run-ins I've had with, with different animals. 
uh, and I'm thinking of bears particularly. I've met a, uh, a polar bear, a grizzly bear, <laughs> and, and a black bear, uh, and, and I was say my life was saved in in all those cases, and I and I and I. I and then I was thinking to the bear, I, I'm all right. Don't I got, I got between the classic position of being with the bear uh, bet- between the mother and the cub, and I was being pushed by the cub towards the mother, and the mother rose up like a like a submarine and sniffed the air to to get the smell of, s- s- smell of me. And I'm thinking, I'm I'm all right. I'm no harm to you. And then the the, the, the mother bear came down and could have torn me to pieces, but instead, like, like, like a ship turning, uh, it presented its rear end to me and, and followed, and the, the cub, which was a substantial size, also jumped beside me and then followed into the, the British Columbian uh, woods. Uh, but I never felt so relaxed. Afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Afterwards, that's that's the key word there. Uh, George Megan uh, coming to us from the UK on tonight's program. Uh, unfortunately, out of time, but George will be back. Author of the international bestseller, "The Longest Walk," the record of our world's first crossing in the entire Americas. This uh, that's the longest unbroken march of all time. The uh, the epic journey took nineteen thousand nineteen miles. Was the total mileage? 2,425 days, all of this done on foot. It's an amazing story, an amazing life that George continues to have in talking to people all across the world. It's always a pleasure to have uh, George with us on the program. Book you'll find at Amazon, authorreputationpress.com. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You can link on directly to information on the book. George, it's always a pleasure. We'll keep working at Skype so we can see you at one of these interviews. We'll have you back on the program. Thank you, sir, once again for being with us on the program. Always a pleasure and look forward to having you back with us. Rick, Rick, it's it's a pleasure and I appreciate it the glory of American media, which you're a a significant part, Rick. So thank you very, very much for for putting up with me. (laughs) I'll put up with you anytime because it's quite enjoyable. George Meekin, our guest on the program. The book is The Longest Walk. Information available at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again, thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.